Hey guys, we have a lot of patrons this time, so before we start this video, a large thank you to Brandon, Medi Sinka, Daniel Lishblau, Carl Mirajan, Owen Bose, Christian Eberhard, and Anthony Casanova. Apologies if I mispronounced any of your names. Your support is greatly appreciated. Thank you so much, guys. I hope you all enjoy the video. Hello guys and welcome back. We are going to conclude our lock-on system in this video. So the first thing we're going to do is make our player strafe uh, when we're actually locked on and make our player turn towards uh, the target we are locked on to. So I went ahead and added these animations here uh, into my locomotion. And here we are running and strafing. I have a whole bunch of these strafe left, strafe right, etc, etc. So I'm just going to go into the animator and show you how to set these up. I won't run through it because we've done this before with our locomotion. So as you can see here, I've created some more additions to my blend tree, and you can take a look at the uh, position X, position Y, and I've just uh, dropped in a bunch of these run strafe left and right. And uh, if I move my vertical on one here and move my horizontal, you will see that the character will strafe uh, depending on the horizontal values. So uh, let's go to our input handler. I think this is where we call our animator, our updating our animator values. Let's see, move input. Okay, no, it's not here. I'm going to go ahead and rename this anyway because this should be handle move input, and that was bothering me. Don't know why I named that move input. Okay, so uh, next, let's go here to the player locomotion because that's where it must be. Yep, and down here. It says animator handler dot update animator values. We're gonna say if and actually if input handler uh, dot lock on flag. Then we want to do one thing, and if not, we want to do another. So I'm just gonna put else here. We're gonna copy this right now, and we're just gonna paste it right up here, and then I'm gonna copy this again. Don't know why I highlighted it again. Paste it down here, and we're gonna change. Uh, on this little line of code here. Right here, if we are locked on, we want to say input handler dot vertical and input handler dot horizontal. So if we are locked on, we're using both of the values, and if we're not, we're only using one. So let's save that. Now, we're also going to want to say uh, and uh, if, if input handler dot lock on flag and uh, input handler dot sprint flag is not true because um, when you're sprinting, your player isn't going to strafe. You're going to break the strafe and sprint uh, the same as if you were rolling. You would roll away. You would not roll uh, towards the target. Next, we actually have to rotate our player. So let's go over here and handle rotation. And we're going to say if input handler dot sprint flag, whoops, dot lock on flag, sorry. Uh, and then we're going to do one thing. And if not, we're going to do another. Pretty straightforward. This is what we're going to do if we're not locked on. So let's copy that and paste it right there. I'm going to say n and input handler dot, oh my goodness, autocomplete, dot sprint flag is equal to false. Now we're going to say vector3. Goodness, I can't type today. Target direction is equal to vector3 dot zero. Then we're going to say target direction is equal to camera transform. We don't have this uh, added yet because we don't have the camera handler as a variable. We're going to make it camera transform dot forward times input handler dot vertical and then we're going to say target direction plus equals camera transform dot right times input handler dot horizontal. I'm going to say target direction dot normalize. So this should look pretty familiar to you. Nothing out of the ordinary so far. Target direction dot y is equal to zero. We don't want any rotation of y. And then we're going to say if target direction equals vector three dot zero, we are just going to say target direction is equal to transform dot forward. And we're going to say quaternion TR for target rotation is equal to quaternion dot look rotation between to our target direction. And then we're going to say 
quaternion target rotation is equal to quaternion dot slurp. So we're going to rotate from our transform rotation. So we're going to rotate from the rotation right now towards our new target rotation, which is uh, the direction of our target. And we're going to do that by rotation speed times time dot delta time. Cool. Okay. Whoa, just a minute here. I actually got this backwards. One second. Transform.rotation is equal to target rotation. Um, so we're actually going to need to make another if statement in here. But first, let's add that camera handler. So camera handler, I'm just going to call that on awake. Camera handler equals find object of type camera handler. Okay, lovely. Let's save that. Now back down here, as I was saying, we're going to say camera handler dot. And there we go. That'll be fine. We'll do the same thing now and uh, paste that there. Okay, now on to my previous point, we actually need to get rid of this right here. And then we're gonna make one more if statement inside here because this is what we're going to do uh, if we're sprinting. So we're going to say if um, input handler dot sprint flag is true or you can say or roll flag also you should say or roll flag um, rather so we're going to do this logic because this is going to uh, allow us to rotate or sprint in the direction we are running uh, now if we're actually not sprinting or rolling and we're locked onto a target we want to face our lock on target so that is actually uh, quite simpler we're just going to say vector 3 rotation direction is equal to move direction and then we're going to say rotation direction is equal to camera handler dot current lock on target dot position minus transform dot position and we're going to say rotation direction dot y is equal to zero and then rotation direction dot normalize And then we're going to do quaternion tr, like above. And we're going to say equals quaternion dot look rotation. And we're going to say um, our rotation direction. And then we're going to say quaternion target rotation is equal to quaternion slurp. And we're going to say transform dot rotation. Uh, and then, as you can probably guess, we're going to say tr for target rotation. We're going to do that by the rotation speed times time dot delta time. Very straightforward. And then we're going to say transform dot rotation equals target rotation. And we can save that. And now we should be rotating towards our target. Okay, we're going to also add um, some variables here for height. I'm going to call this public float uh, locked pivot position. And I make one for unlocked pivot position. The locked pivot position is going to be 2.25F. I've tested this already. This is a height that I like. You can play around with if you want. The unlocked pivot position is going to be. 1.65f. Now, what this is going to do is it's going to adjust uh, the height of the camera's pivot. So we're going to make a function called set camera height because when you lock onto something in Souls, uh, the camera actually angles up a bit further. So it looks like you're kind of looking down on your target just by a little bit. So um, we're going to make that private. Actually, I might make that public. I might call it an input handler. Um, private for now. Vector three velocity is equal to vector three dot zero. Then we're going to say vector three new locked position, as in the new camera's new position when you're locked on. And we're going to say new vector three zero locked pivot position. And then we're going to say we're going to make another variable called vector three uh, new unlocked position, as in the new position of the camera's height when you're not locked on. And we're going to say equals new vector three zero, and then the unlocked position because we only want to change. Um, the height of the camera on one of the axes. So we're going to say if current lock and target does not equal null, uh, then we're going to say camera pivot transform dot transform dot local position is equal to vector three dot smooth damp between camera pivot transform dot local position and our new lock position and we're going to reference our velocity and we're going to go by time dot delta time and we're going to do the same thing we're just going to say else so if your uh, current lock on target is null that means you're not locked on 
we're going to do the exact same thing as above, except we're going to say, uh, instead of our new lock position, we will say um, our unlocked position, or new unlocked position. And all this is gonna do when you lock on and off is uh, just adjust your camera's height. So we're gonna go ahead, and actually now I'm thinking about this, I think I'm gonna switch this from a private to a public, so I wanna call it at the end of the uh, handle lock on function. Uh, in our input handler. So let's switch this right here to public. Actually, I should be calling this when we say handle lock on. And I'm going to do that because that will be less memory use because if I put it here, it's being called every frame. I'm just gonna put it here for now. Uh, I'm gonna change it momentarily or after the video. That it was gonna do it. Um, so let's place that here for right now. So let's save it and test it. And now when I lock onto a target, as you can see, look at that, we strafe, the camera rises, and we're strafing back and forth and our animations are changing depending on the direction we're going. That looks great, fantastic. So yeah, you guys should put the set camera height in your, in your handle lock on function. Um, I'm gonna do that. I didn't do it in this video, looking back now, rewatching this clip. I thought I was going to, I guess I wasn't, I didn't, so I'll do that in the next video. It's not too important anyway. So now we're gonna go into the um, the for loop here and our handle lock on, and we're gonna say if physics.linecast. A line cast is really cool because what it does is it shoots a ray cast between two points in the game. This is very useful for lock on uh, if you want to detect anything in between you and your target, like a structure, which is what we're going to do. So we're going to say uh, player manager dot lock on transform, and we, yeah, I know we haven't made a player manager variable yet, but we're just going to say it. So we're going to start the uh, lock on transform position. We're going to start the ray cast there, and we're going to shoot it at our current lock on target, uh, which is our that's called our character. Uh, so character dot lock on transform, and then because of this, it's going to fire a ray cast between these two points, and uh, we can actually check with that ray cast to see if it hits something uh, of a certain layer. So you can see where I'm going with this. Very very powerful. I'm going to say out hit. Uh, I didn't make uh, the hit variable for the ray cast yet. We'll do that in a second as well. Um, so now we're going to say debug dot log or dot draw line sorry and we're just going to copy and paste this right here just so we can see it in the game if we want to debug it if something's not working uh, lowercase p okay and now we're going to say if hit no oh, not controller hit goodness auto correct oh my goodness did it again okay right i did not make the hit variable which is probably why it's wanting to autofill something else. So let's do that real quick. Right below float view will angle, let's make a ray cast hit and call it hit. And then we're gonna say if hit dot transform dot game object dot layer is equal to, and I'm just gonna make a variable for this, we're gonna call it, it's called environment layer, or just, uh, yeah, environment layer. I made that get either, we'll make that in a second. So if it does hit, anything with the layer of environment layer, then we know that uh, you cannot lock on because there's something in the way. There's an object between you and the target you're trying to lock onto. Otherwise, then yeah, add the target to your potential uh, lock on targets list. So if there's nothing in the way, then you can absolutely lock on. So let's make these variables now. We can make the player manager variable and the environment layer variable. So up here, right below this layer mask called ignore layers, I'm gonna make a layer mask called environment layer. And I am going to right above uh, this here now, call the player manager. First, let's go down here on start. Let's make a start for this. And we're gonna say environment layer is equal to layer mask dot name to layer uh, environment. I'm gonna copy that because that's what I'm gonna call the layer. And all that does is just, yeah, it's, uh, it's giving you the name of layer get text. Okay, so let's say player manager, player manager, and then in our awake method, we're gonna say player manager equals find object of type player manager. Very straightforward. Do that real fast. Excellent. There we go, I don't know why that didn't have brackets there. Fix that real quick. I cannot type today, goodness, so bad. All right, 
save and I think we should be pretty close to done. So uh, I'm gonna add a layer here, I'm gonna paste environment layer eight. And then I've made a wall over here as you can see, and I've tagged each of the blocks in this wall with environment. Now if I press play, as you can see, I will approach the wall and I try to lock on and I am unable to lock on. Okay, I cannot lock on right now, good. Now if I go to the scene and I highlight all of these walls and I lower them, and I go back to the game, I can now lock on. So guys, you have a lock on system now that will actually uh, and effectively find a lock on target, switch between the targets, will only lock on if the target is within your screen space, like within a viewing angle. So you won't lock on to things that are off screen and you cannot lock on to things that are behind structures. Now that is a fully working, fully functional, pretty polished lock on system akin to Souls. I hope you guys have enjoyed this portion of the series. I've had a lot of fun making it. Now we have one small bug that I'm going to address in a future video, the next bug squishing video, because um, I'm gonna play with a couple different ways to handle it. Um, so basically if you lock on to targets and they're not facing you, um, your lock on selection is inverted, meaning if you want to go from right to left, instead of hitting um, the left arrow key, you'll have to hit the right if they're back on to you because it uh, judges the direction from the target's forward facing transform. I don't think that'll be hard to fix. I know of a way to fix it very easily with an if statement, but I wanna see if I can do it even better and maybe just change the inverse transform point or something. Anyway, I'm getting uh, a bit carried away now. Uh, yeah, we have a really cool lock-on system working, so uh, that's awesome. If you made it this far, give yourself a pat in the back, guys. It's starting to come a long way. This project's looking pretty cool. And uh, as usual, if you enjoyed the video, please drop a like. It does genuinely help me so much. A comment helps even more. And if you're feeling super generous, uh, check out my Patreon below. To all my patrons and all my viewers and all my supporters, thank you so much, guys. And I will see you in the next one. Bye.